Nirahim Aslam Lekum. Uh, in this video, I'll be making a very strong argument for the hadith uh, preservation of a hadith, which in turn can prove the truth of Islam in numerous ways. Now, the argument I'll be using is a very simple argument. It's very easy to understand, but uh, it's a recent one. And this argument will uh, mainly apply only on uh, Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. If the stylometric studies are done on other works, then uh, we can give arguments for those as well. Now, firstly, what is stylometry? Stylometry is basically a science that is used to uh, identify the authors or author of, a var of various texts. Basically, what is done is we take a text and analyze it to see who has authored it, who has not authored it. Basically, it's for author identification. Now, the study I'll be referencing is done by a uh, scholar, Al I think it's an Algerian scholar named Halim Saud. Uh, he has not just done one or two studies on it, he has done multiple studies on it. He has a book on this topic as well. Now, I will link uh, this study in the description and other studies in the description. Now, understand this point firstly. These studies are not uh, initially about Hadith preservation, they were about author discrimination between Quran and Ahadith. But a uh, side benefit of these studies is that they are a very strong argument for Hadith preservation. Let me explain why. Firstly, we, sh uh, we shall go to the conclusions of this study. Because uh, the other things are technical, quite technical. So, uh, here it goes. In this investigation, two visual analytics based clustering approaches have been employed to make visual authorship clustering of 25 religious text segments. Basically, it took uh, segments of uh, Quran and segments of Sahih Bukhari and it addressed them uh, uh, and it used them to analyze. Now, let's read some of the conclusions of this study. In the first approach, hierarchical clustering. The resulting dendrogram shows two separated sharp clusters. The Quran cluster in the right and the Hadith cluster in the left. We can see there is no intersection between the different clusters and that the final linkage is extremely weak since the corresponding distance is very large. This shows that there are probably two authors, the Quran author and Hadith author, which means Hadith has one author. In the second approach, the, which is uh, an automatic clustering technique, the resulting 3D representation to, shows two main clusters. A Quran cluster located at the top right area and a Hadith cluster located at the bottom left area of the 3D representation. Although the Quran cluster is more condensed, the two sex, sets of text segments have been automatically organized into two sharp clusters with different symbol markers showing that they are two main authors. The Quran, Quran author and the Hadith author that and the that the two authors are different. So we can see the Hadith are identified as having one author. Right? Discussion. Now, uh, I don't want to bore you with the technical stuff. Uh, I'll just go to uh, the conclusions here. Right? Now, this is the end point. That is, by exploring the results section and by observing all the clusters and text disposition in those clusters, and since the topics and genres are quite similar for the two topics, we easily see that all the results we got correspond to the third case. In other words, all the clustering methods lead to two distinct collect clusters, one cluster containing the Quran text and another one containing the Hadith text in a visual way. Consequently, and statistically speaking, it appears that the two investig investigated books, Quran and Ahadith, belong to two different authors, or at least two different writing styles. But what's probable here, and what's uh, reasonable, quite reasonable here to say, is that two, uh, the two books have two different authors, and Hadith, these Ahadith have one author. Now, these are the sayings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that are recorded in Sahih Bukhari. The reason this argument works for Sahih Muslim as well is because the, there are, there's a lot of correspondence between Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. 1900 of the Ahadith in Bukhari are also in Sahih Muslim. Plus, they have multiple, uh, they have very similar narrators, same narrators in many cases. And they have uh, not just the same narrators, 
they were recorded in the same way they have the same level of authenticity which is why this is also an argument this will be an argument for hadith preservation now let me explain why this is an argument for hadith preservation i've mentioned the study now let me explain why it proves hadith preservation here's a very simple reason firstly every hadith in abu uh, sahih bukhari every single hadith in sahih bukhari and every single hadith in sahih muslim these are narrated elsewhere as well which means imam bukhari did not make them up if they are narrated elsewhere imam bukhari could not have made them up right that's just common sense secondly uh these are these were narrated by numerous companions tabi'in tabba tabi'in and numerous people in numerous chains in different time and places in different cities are narrating these narrations so this is not coming from one source now understand this point if the people were making these narrations up right they won't have one author it makes common sense because there would be so many authors if the uh, narrations are coming from multiple sources it won't have one author because there there are two three or four authors the only way these narrations can have one author is if the narrators all the narrators were honest and these narrations go back to a common source now the only common source in all those narrations is prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam so this proves that these are hadith go back to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam that proves hadith preservation beyond reasonable doubt i mean there's no way around this point and funnily enough how uh, just think about this just just conceive this these are a lot of these were uh, written as well but uh, many of these were oral as well right how could oral tradition be so uh, uh, transmitted so precisely that it shows one author i mean it could show conceivably that we could claim that the uh, the meaning is preserved but the words are of the companions or the narrators but that is not the case here what we have here is the words being transmitted from prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam till the compilation of hadith and those books are preserved so this is a clear cut proof for hadith preservation now uh, before that i'll address uh, before ending this uh, video i'll address quite a few uh, common contentions to this point firstly this doesn't prove all hadith are preserved the uh, all sahi hadith are preserved i agree it doesn't but it proves that sahi bukhari and sahi muslim are preserved this is the study is only done on sahi bukhari and sahi muslim so it can prove only sahi bukhari and sahi muslim that contention is addressed and it was uh, quite desperate to be honest secondly understand this point these narrations are not just in sahi bukhari and sahi muslim they are in other books as well a lot of other books think about it how can so many people in writing in different times and places have the same author of uh, narrations it can't happen unless they go back to a common source and the only common source is prophet muhammad sallallahu muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this proves hadith preservation now i'll address a few co- uh, common contentions some people uh, whine about stylometry right uh, that uh, it's not trustworthy or whatever check the wikipedia page on this section on stylometry stylometry is used for forensics if it is good enough to be used for forensic science right to identify in such important cases then it's good enough for identification of a uh, uh, for hadith preservation for hadith preservation it should be good enough there is no way around this point another contention that is made uh, basically that uh, and i have heard this from someone who was studying orientalist right and this just shows the desperation of orientalist this guy claimed basically that uh, all there was a profitable archetype like there was a style in mind of people and everyone made up ahadees and they corresponded to this to the uh, that particular style and that is how we can explain the all of these hadees having one author now understand the st- desperation of this point firstly this is a conspiracy theory something david dyke or uh, alex jones would make right so uh, there is a very strong burden of proof on the orientalist secondly here's the issue when we see people make forgeries like right, with anything in life some people are really good at it uh some people are uh, mediocre at it and some people are really bad at it right so if people were making up these ahadees right we would expect uh, differences because of that we won't expect one author for the very simple reason because 
most people would not be good enough to forge at that level. That's just common sense. Thirdly, fourthly, I mean, these are these were uh, produced in uh, were uh, narrated from different regions and different times and places. How could it happen that everyone had the same common type and they were making it up? I mean, this doesn't make sense. Another contention that is made is that because the ahadis are in a similar gender, uh, genre, then uh, Salometry can't identify or uh, differentiate between authors. This is a baseless contention because there are works of uh, Shakespeare and other English playwrights that uh, Salometry has distinguished between. Basically, uh, there was a work that was identified as uh, a work of someone else other than Shakespeare, yet through Salometry it was determined that works belongs to uh, Shakespeare. So we can see stylometry distinguished between different genre, uh, in the same genre of different writers. So that contention goes out the window. Another contention, and this has been brought once, yeah? And this actually shows the desperation, uh, this actually is a rather interesting example. Namely, there was one particular case where stylometry could not distinguish between authors. Now understand this point. Just because stylometry does not work in one case, that does, that does not mean it doesn't work in all other cases. It evidently works in all other cases, right? So one example of another language where it doesn't work does not disprove the fact that it works in all the other circumstances. This is an issue of probability and there's a very high probability of stylometry working, which means there's a very high probability of authenticity of all these. Understand this point. There is an issue of burden of proof here. If uh, they, It is not the case that only Muslims have the burden of proof for hadith. If someone claims that hadith are not preserved, they have the burden of proof for that. If Muslims claim hadith are preserved, Muslims have burden of proof for that. Burden of proof is on both parties, not just one. So we can prove probabilistically there is a very high probability of stylometry being accurate and if stylometry there is a very high probability of stylometry being uh, accurate, we have a very strong argument for hadith preservation. Now, there's another issue with the, that point. The, uh, I'll just address a few contentions about where stylometry could not differentiate in that language. Firstly, stylometry can differentiate between Arabic language. How do we know this? Here's, here's how we know this. Because this guy, Halim Sayud, this guy did two other uh, scholar I'm using here. He did two different studies on multiple Arabic texts. One time he took seven, and uh, other time he took another number, other than the Quran and Ahadith. And uh, the, uh, in the Arabic language, those texts were distinguished by stylometry. So we have evidence of stylometry distinguishing between Arabic texts. Yeah? Another point. Again, Quran and Ahadith are very similar topics, and this is mentioned in the Ahadith. And stylometry does distinguish between them. So stylometry can distinguish between... Uh, uh, Arabic text from a very similar time period. Like there is, there is at most 100 200 years difference between Quran and Ahadith if we go by the manuscript. Yeah, and in reality, there, there is no difference because they, uh, these go back to Prophet Muhammad. But even if we go by the manuscript evidence and what is generally accepted by even by Orientalists, right? Ahadith and Quran are not that far apart. So, stylometry can distinguish between texts from similar time periods in Arabic. So there are no contentions against this argument other than just random whining. I mean, think about it. This is a mind-blowing proof for Hadith preservation. There is no way around this point. Now, I've given very strong reasons for why it's a huge proof for Hadith preservation. I have uh, given, uh, I've addressed the uh, common contentions, the best contentions, in my opinion, that have any sort of weight, any hope of having some weight. I've addressed those contentions. Now, inshallah, I'll end this video. Uh, I was away from YouTube because uh, I was busy debating uh, on Clubhouse. Inshallah, I'll make uh, regular videos. Thank you for watching. Allah Hafiz.